What's up, everybody? Facts the deal. My name is Mike Fields, also known as Facts, and welcome to another episode of Black Facts, Black Facts. Oh, yes. This is where I get to celebrate Black History Month 2022 in my own special way you already know. Ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. Today is Saturday, also known as Sat Day, to a lot of people I know. February 26, 2022, it's the 26th episode of Black Facts, Black Facts, oh yes. And today I had to get all spiffied up, kind of was planning this one. I knew who I was going to celebrate today, all right? So thank you for my Christmas gift, Aunt Jill, Mitch, and Jacob. I love y'all, thank y'all for helping me look good on this 26th episode of Black Facts, oh yes. That is facts. F A X. Thank you, Jill. <laughs> facts. <laughs> facts. Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of stuff I want to share with y'all today. Got to get through it. We don't have much time. We're not in the museum today. We're on location, so I got a new machine I'm working with now. I don't have my rusty, trusty laptop. Okay. All right. I let that rest for a bit. I'm gonna try something new today, all right? Especially because I look so good. Oh, yes. Thanks. So, the person that we're gonna to celebrate today is somebody who's close to my heart, not because I know them or anything, I never met this person, but what this person stood for, stands for, the legacy that they left, and when I was doing the research, it helped me appreciate their work even more. Um, their presence on this earth even more, their legacy even more, so that now when I go back and watch their projects, I have a, a better understanding of where they were, maybe mentally, um, spiritually, but nonetheless, I'm not gonna hold you. Ladies and gentlemen, the person we are celebrating today is the one, the only, Black Panther, Mr. Chadwick Boseman. Come on, y'all Chad Boseman. Mr. Bozeman, he is one of the goats. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Give it up for Jack Bozeman, y'all. Listen, folks, since he's one of the goats, you know what I did when I did the research, right? You know how I typed his name in there. All caps. And guess what else I did? I Googled him. Oh, yes. That's how I did it. Google, all caps, let's go. So, all we got to do is hit all caps on there. Shout out to everybody on the Black Panther soundtrack. Kendrick Lamar, SZA, everybody. Shout out to Ryan Coogler, Ryan Coogler, um, and the rest of the cast of Black Panther. I love this jam. I'm gonna turn it right back down a little bit. All right, now. So for Mr. Bozeman, we're gonna spell it out. All caps, here we go. Capital C H A D W I C K space. Capital B O S E M A N. Hit enter on that J. Oh yeah. So much information, y'all. I mean, like, for one, just go to YouTube. YouTube Chadwick Bozeman. Alright? And all kinds of stuff pops up. I mean, it's just crazy. Definitely check out this video right here where it says Chadwick Boseman, There Is No Black Panther Without Denzel. Definitely look that one up, all right? Yes. And there's also Denzel speaking on ET Canada about Chadwick Boseman in his final days. But this one right here, that's that got to me, all right? So I'm just saying, check that one out specifically. Okay, now let's get into the information. I see Wikipedia page, imdb.com. The Daily Mail, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, New York Times, that's nytimes.com, Britannica.com, People.com, um, let's see, RottenTomatoes.com. All right, so let's get into the research. All right, I'm not going to hold you long. I'm going to do my best to get through this thing without crying or nothing like that, all right? <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. All right, so um, here we go. So, goes. 
Mr. Chadwick Aaron Bozeman was born November 29th, 1976, and was raised in Anderson, South Carolina. He's the son of Carolyn Mattress and Leroy Bozeman, both African American. His mother was a nurse, and his father worked at a textile factory and managed an upholstery business. Hardworking folks. Facts. In his youth, Bozeman practiced martial arts and continued his this training as an adult. And we'll see that if we ever watch the Black Panther. Like, watch the Black Panther movie, you'll see the fluid movement and all that, because he's still in the practice. Facts. It definitely helps out, okay? As a child, he wanted to become an architect. Didn't know that. Shout out to my line brother Fred. Oh yes, architect. You already know. Um, let's see here. Yeah. According to Bozeman, DNA testing indicated that some of his ancestors were Creole people and Limba people from Sierra Leone and Yoruba people from Nigeria. Bozeman graduated from T.L. Hanna High School in 1995 where he played on the basketball team. Played on the basketball team. In school. Like who else? Prince. Facts. Here we go. In his junior year, he wrote his first play, Crossroads, and staged it at the school after a classmate was shot and killed. Now that, that, that takes heart and imagination and just like, I mean, it takes a lot to do something like that. I don't even know what, that, what that's like, but to do something like that in honor of a classmate who was shot and killed, like, man, I think it's powerful. I think it's beautiful. Anyway, he competed in speech and debate in the National Speech and Debate Association at T.L. Hanna. He placed eighth in original oratory at the 1995 tournament. Chadwick was recruited to play basketball at college. Told you he was nice. It was nice. Prince was nice too. And I'm saying Prince because when I do, the more, the more people we, we celebrate, I see similarities in, in all of the people. Like, there's so many... So many like similar character traits or, or beginnings or you know childhood, early education, kindergarten age, like discoveries and seeds that are planted with almost every last one of the people that I've celebrated. It just seems like everybody has some kind of like link from childhood to adulthood. It has everything to do with what they end up doing and everybody knows them for when they become adults. There's always that link, that, that connection that starts in childhood and manifests in adulthood and that come, that becomes a thing that we know them for. You know what I mean? So I just I just appreciate that because I work with children like, every day and I always tell them to really like hone in on what it is they really love. I mean, there's a whole lot of negative stuff out there, but what do you love? What do you love to do? Love to eat? What, what do you, I mean, like... Let's tap it. Let's tap into that. You know what I mean? Let's invest in that. So, invest in the youth, y'all. Invest in the chill. Oh, yes. Um, Chadwick was recruited to play basketball at college, but chose the arts instead. His heart was in the arts. All right. Attending college at HU at Howard University in Washington, D.C. I'm sure when I said HU, somebody said, you know. <laughs> Shout out to Danny Ray. Listen. 2004, I was selected to be in the 2004 Howard University Homecoming Fashion Show. I had a blast. Shout out to Danny Ray and the crew. Um, I remember that was a, a very special point, uh, a very special like like time in my life because I was making my first demos and everything. So I don't know if I asked for full permission or anything, but I just remember like being on the runway and tossing out my CDs from like whatever pockets I had and the clothes that I had on when I was like modeling different designers. I had, my, my, my pockets were stuffed. I had on like a, like a bubble jacket or whatever. I was just tossing out CDs left and right. And these were CDs at the time. Just shoo, and they were like spinning and like flying across like the crowd and everything. People were grabbing them. And then like maybe four, three or four years ago, I was on a job interview uh, for Kip Schools in DC and one of the principals, and this is when, when the event was wrapping up, there was a recruiting fair. And one of the principals that was, was uh, wrapping up, um, you know, 
I approached her just to talk to her and just to see, talk, to ask her about her school and everything. And I told her my name. She said, she said, well, what's, what's your name again? I said, you know, Mike Fields. And she said, wait, the Mike Fields? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, like, I was like, say it again. She said, the Mike Fields? I was like, uh, yeah. She was like, oh my God, oh my God. You sing? I was like, well, yeah, I, yeah, I sing a little bit, yeah. She's like, oh my God, oh my God. She said, at how you, I, I went to Howard University, my roommate and I, we have your CD. We have your CD, we used to rock it all the time. We, and she was trying to figure out like who still had it. Like if she had it or she let her friend, or if her friend has it, but somebody still has it from back then, yo. And this, like I said, this was like three or four years ago. So we're talking like 2018, you know, 2019, 2018. Like, man, I'm trying to tell you, that thing touched my heart, man, in such a major way. So shout out to Howard University. Um, I appreciate you, I love you. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Oh yes. While at Howard, he worked in African American oriented bookstore. He worked in an African American oriented bookstore near the university, which friend Vanessa German said was important and inspirational to him. He drew on his experience there for his play, Hieroglyphic Graffiti. His teachers at Howard University included the great Al Freeman Jr. Please research Al Freeman Jr. That is capital A-L space, capital F-R-E-E-M-A-N space, Jr. That's just capital J-R, period. And Felicia Rashad. And if anybody watched the Cosby show, she is Miss Claire Huxtable. Oh, yes. Felicia Rashad, that is, and she is definitely one of the ghosts. You better believe it. Capital P. H-Y-L-I-C-I-A space. Capital R-A-S-H-A-D. Oh, yes. And she became a mentor to Mr. Bozeman. Um, Felicia Rashad helped raise funds, notably from her friend and prominent actor, the one and only, the GOAT. This man is the GOAT. Mr. Denzel Washington. Oh, yes. So she and Denzel, please research this before we move in any further. Please research Denzel Washington. All right. Do yourself a favor. And in this case, don't cheat yourself. Treat yourself. Capital D-E-N-Z-E-L. Capital D-E-N-Z-E-L. I bet you you just put in Denzel on Google right now. You don't even need to put in Washington. Oh, I'm going to do that myself right now. Just to prove a point. Let me see. So I'm going in there. Google. I'm trying to tell you. I can Google it. So we're going to type in Denzel and see what happens. All caps. D-E-N-Z-E-L. Enter on that Jane. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's automatic. It's automatic. The one name wonder himself. That's my man, yo. That's my man. I'm trying to tell you, dog. Now you're gonna get in there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Bring it back down. Bring it back down. Stay focused. That's all right. Oh, yes. All right. Back to the script. So Felicia Rashad and Denzel Washington put their resources together, their finances together, so that Bozeman and other classmates could attend the Oxford Summer Program of the British. American Drama Academy at Balliol College, Oxford in England, to which they have been accepted. That is big time. Planting a seed in the youth so that they can fulfill or at least walk towards their dreams. <sighs> Gotta invest in the youth, y'all. For real. Gotta invest, man. Gotta invest. It's like that. Because we see what it ends up. We see how it, how it results, man. We see the result. Anyway, Bozeman wanted to write and direct and initially began studying acting to learn how to relate to actors. Brilliant. He attended the program in 1998 and developed an appreciation for the playwriting of William Shakespeare, studying the works of various dramatists, including Samuel Beckett and Harold Pinter. 
He also traveled to Africa for the first time while at college, working in Ghana with his professor, Mike Malone, to preserve and celebrate rituals with performances on a proscenium stage. He said, well, this is Chadwick saying, he said it was one of the most significant learning experiences of his life. I bet. We'll see how that plays out as well. After he returned to the U.S., he took additional coursework in film studies, graduating from New York City's Digital Film Academy. Nice. Look up the Digital Film Academy in New York. Bozeman lived in Brooklyn. Shout out to JD, Ms. D, Mr. D. Shout out. Love y'all. Thank y'all so much. I love you. Yes. Um, let's see. He lived in Brooklyn, New York at the start of his career. In 2000, he was named a Drama League Directing Fellow. Chabik directed productions including George C. Wolfe's The Colored Museum and a staging of Amiri Baraka's Dutchman. In 2000, Chabik Bozeman graduated from HU. He graduated, somebody said, you know, I already know. Uh, Chabik, Bo Chabik Bozeman graduated from Howard University in 2000 with a Bachelor in Fine Arts in Directing. Between 2002 and 2009, Bozeman worked as the drama instructor in the Schomburg Junior Scholars Program at the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, and that was in Harlem, New York. Y'all check out Harlem, Research Harlem, New York, H, capital H-A-R-L-E-M, all right? He rose to prominence as a playwright and stage actor in 2002, performing in multiple productions and winning an All Delco Award in 2002 for his part in Ron Milner's Urban Transitions. Now, All Delco is, it's an acronym, so it's capital A-U-D-E-L-C-O. Check that out. As a member of the National Shakespeare Company of New York, he played Romeo in Romeo and Juliet and Malcolm in Macbeth. So this dude has Shakespeare training. Theater training. He's producing, he's directing. And this is all before Marvel. Jackie Rob, I'm not even gonna spoil it. I'm just saying, this is all before like, I had no idea who he was at this time. But he was grinding, dude, living out his dreams, like striving, strive, strive, facts. It's like that. He directed and wrote plays as part of the hip-hop theater movement. Uh-oh. His works included Rhyme Deferred, in which he also performed, and Hieroglyphic Graffiti. Why am I thinking about um, Hamilton? Like, Hamilton just came... When I saw hip-hop theater, the hip-hop theater movement, like, Hamilton just came to my mind. Hmm. Rhyme Deferred was co-written with Howard classmate Camila Forbes, commissioned for a national tour, and featured in the Fire This Time anthology of works. This dude is doing it, man. Hieroglyphic graffiti was produced at a variety of locations, including the National Black Theater Festival in 2001. At the 2002 Hip Hop Theater Festival, Bozeman also gave a one-man show called Red Clay and Carved Concrete. In 2003, Bozeman was cast in his first television role, an episode of Third Watch. Nice. And began playing Reggie Montgomery in the daytime soap opera, All My Children. See, I didn't know. I don't watch soaps like that. You know what I mean? I, I kind of like got into it during college, but, you know. Now, my Aunt Donnie, she used to watch soaps. I think my mom, I think she watched soaps here and there. I don't know. My mom was always just, just mad busy. Um... It was certainly a good thing, but I never really caught on to soaps like that. A lot of my friends did, so I'm, I'm pretty sure most of my, uh, especially back at UVA, I'm pretty sure a lot of my friends at UVA knew who Chadwick Boseman was just from watching All My Children. I just remember a lot of people loving All My Children in college. And I was like, man, why are you watching soaps? I always thought that was like, a, like an extreme adult thing. You know what I'm saying? That's just what my mind was. Uh, facts. No hate, no shade on the, on, the, on the daytime soaps or nothing like that. I just never really, I don't know, I just never really caught on with it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I would love to be in one, though, straight up. Because when I actually started, like, watching soaps, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, the way the sequencing and everything, I thought it was, mm. I can see how people, like, just love and got hooked 
on soap operas. And now we have reality TV, and so it's like, you know what I mean? It's, I don't know. It's, I think I think it's pretty cool that he like he really got got going through soaps, and like people still people at that point could have an opportunity to see his brilliance at like early in his career. I'm just mad I missed it. Facts. All right. Peek this though. And this might be why I never caught it. Chadwick was fired from All My Children after voicing concerns to producers about racist stereotypes in the script. The role was subsequently recast with Bozeman's future Black Panther co-star, Michael B. Jordan, who took that part that Chadwick Bozeman had. Crazy, right? Facts. His other early television work included episodes of the series Law and Order, which my parents love, Cold Case, CSI New York, and ER. His best known play, Deep Azure, was commissioned in 2004 by the Congo Square Theater Company in Chicago. The play about police brutality, a daring subject in 2004, and largely delivered in rhyme, was workshopped at the Apollo Theater in New York. Again, folks, another reference to the Apollo Theater. We talked about the Apollo with like Motown and Stevie and the Jackson 5 and all that. Listen, research the Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York. Apollo, capital, all caps because it's like that. Capital, A-P-O-L-L-O, -L -L -O, Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York. All right? Across the way from Sylvia's. I hope. I haven't been to Harlem in, in a long time, so hopefully Sy Sylvia's is still there. Last I knew that she like she bought the whole block. So hopefully it's still there. I hope it's still there. Shout out to Sylvia. Oh yes, Miss Sylvia, I should say. All right. In 2006, Deep Azure was nominated for a Jeff Award for Best New Work. In 2007, Chadwick also directed, wrote, and produced the short film Blood Over a Broken Pond, which was honored at the 2008 Hollywood Black Film Festival. In 2008, Bozeman turned Deep Azure into a screenplay. Michael Green, who would become his agent, picked it up and contacted Bozeman when Tessa Thompson and Omari Hardwick, oh yes, from what show? What show? You already know. Power, oh yes. Expressed an interest in playing the lead roles, prompting Bozeman's move to Los Angeles. California dreaming, baby. He was getting the work in. He, he had people who were interested in his work and it just seemed like the best move, the best time, the right time, the right move to head to LA. Facts. Oh yes. Kind of like when, you know, Michael Jackson and his family packed up and moved to LA. It was just, the, the, the man was there, they needed to be there. The opportunities and just to, you know, just to be there and in the midst of everything that, that they needed to be in, made that move. Stay tuned. In 2008, a lot of my friends have done that. I've done that. I mean, moved to LA, that kind of thing. Yeah, it's it's definitely like it, it all depends on what you know somebody moves there for. You know what I mean? Like the kind of time that a person might have. It all everybody's different. But for me, I know what I was going there for. California dreaming, baby. Like basically the same thing he moved there for. You know, it's just like that, man. Anyway, let me stay focused. All right. Um, let's see. He, in 2008, Bozeman moved to Los Angeles to pursue his film and acting career. He was cast in a recurring role on television series Lincoln Heights. I think I remember seeing him in one of those episodes. I think so. As Nathaniel Ray Taylor, an Army veteran with PTSD who was later revealed to be the son of the main character before re-enlisting. He also appeared in his first feature film in 2008, The Express, the Ernie Davis story as running back Floyd Little. All right. In 2010, Chadwick landed his first regular role in the television series Persons Unknown as the Marine Graham McNair. In 2013, Bozeman, Bozeman's second short film as director, and the project was called Heaven. It premiered at the Holly Shorts Film Festival. Bozeman's breakthrough role. Here we go. The breakthrough now. It came in 2013. Okay. Now let's let's go back up just a little bit. 
We said he moved to LA in 2008. And his first breakthrough role in film was when? 2013, that is five years. We're not talking about overnight success. We're talking about hard work, dedication, dreaming, perseverance, grinding, striving, belief. And we'll see later on, you know, like where he, you know, about his faith and everything, like everything he had, he put it into what he wanted to do with his life. I dig it. So his first breakthrough role came in 2013 with the film 42, 42. Yes, sir. In which he portrayed the lead role of ba baseball legend Jackie Robinson. Shout out to Jackie Robinson. Y'all do the research on Jackie Robinson, please. I know in, in, in a lot of, you know, uh, classrooms or, across the, the country, you know, Jackie Robinson is like, I would say like top five, top 10 and who's automatically associated with Black History Month. Um, but seriously, like there's a lot of, there's still a lot of people who don't really know who Jackie Robinson was. I mean, not just, okay, I don't know him personally, but just the name, like what is that synonymous with? What would it, you know, what about him? Why is he significant? Do the research, folks, please. Capital J-A-C-K-I-E. That's all caps, because he's definitely one of the ghosts. Um, space, capital R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N. Bozeman had been directing an off-Broadway play in the East Village when he auditioned for the role. So check this out. He's still grinding, bro. And was considering giving up, an act, giving up acting to pursue directing full-time. About 25 other actors had been seriously considered for the role, but director Brian Heck was a Helgeland, Heglin, um, liked Bozeman's bravery in choosing to read the most difficult scene in which Robinson, the character, goes down a stadium tunnel and breaks a bat in anger, and he cast him because of that. Bozeman auditioned twice, and he cast him because he took that the most difficult scene and nailed it. I mean, he had the training. He took the opportunity. He showed up and gave it what he had. Nailed it. 42, baby. Part of the audition process involved playing baseball. Bozeman had been involved with Little League Baseball as a child, but was primarily a basketball player growing up. All right? Because he was recruited to play basketball, not baseball. And he was saying that, in this part, the casting directors likely notice his athleticism rather than specifically his baseball skills. So what I tell students and, and, and especially those who are involved in sports, those who want to play sports, yo, get out there, man, do it. Like stick with it. You want to be, you want to play in the NBA? Are you practicing? Are you at least, why, is it, do you have a favorite player? Do you have a favorite team? Do you have favorite players? How are you how are you connecting this dream to like reality to everyday life? There's got to be some kind of seed that you know um, Especially when we we come of age where we start to realize hey, I really like this Well, do I do it every day? Do I, do I think about it? Do I draw it? Do I put it on my wall? Do I have posters? Is it on my, in my notebooks? Am I wearing gear? Like How am I how am I telling myself that this is for me? This is what I want. And I do, we just talk, we have discussions like that. You know what I mean? Because they see me with my t-shirts and, you know, my you know my flag and all that. They see, you know, even my house colors. You know what I mean? Purple house? They see it every day. So, what does that say about me? It says that I love purple house. Whatever it is that I'm rocking, I love it. Especially when I'm rocking that burgundy and gold, baby. Facts! Oh, yes. All right. So, goes. Jackie Robinson's widow, Miss Rachel Robinson. Salute to Miss Robinson. Um, she commented that Bozeman's performance was like seeing her husband again. Wow. To, re to replicate Robinson's mannerisms, Bozeman trained for five months with professional baseball coaches who would tape his practices every few weeks, and they would basically split screen his technique with Robinson's technique to allow him to compare and contrast. Game film, baby. I believe in that. Game film. You know what I mean? Take the test with the test. Use the test to take the test. Oh, yes. Facts. Oh, yes. 
Uh, let's see. After having portrayed football player Little in the Express, Bozeman was encouraged by stunt coordinator Alan Groff to approach running bases in the same way as Robinson had been a college football player. Because Jackie Robinson was a football player as well. Jackie Robinson was bad, yo. Gifted, multi-talented. Upon taking the role, Bozeman first spoke with Rachel Robinson, which she said was a great help in discovering the character now. Not just the athleticism, but the actual person of Jackie Robinson. The same year, Bozeman also starred in the independent film The Kill Hole, which was released in theaters a few weeks before 42. In 2014, Chadwick Bozeman starred in another sporting film, Draft Day, which uh, he played a fictional football player, Vontae Mack. In 2014 as well, Chadwick played James Brown in the movie, the biographical film, Get On Up. He nailed that joint too, man. I, at first, I was like, "You gotta have the moves, man. You got—I mean, this is James Brown. You gotta have, like, not just the, just the whole thing. You gotta have the whole thing. You know what I mean? He nailed it. I ain't gonna lie. I'm sitting there like, this brother is bad. Anyway, as Brown, Bozeman did some singing and all of his own dancing. He did some singing and all of his own dancing. Okay. Working with choreographer um, Akomon Jones, it's Akomon, Akomon, I'm not really sure how to say it, I don't want to disrespect, so it's capital A, A, K, O, M, O, N, Jones. I say Akomon. Akomon Jones for five to eight hours a day over two months in preparation. Grinding, baby, you gotta get it right. Producer Mick Jagger, look, research Mick Jagger, that is capital M-I-C-K, space, capital J-A-G-G-E-R, definitely researched Big Jagger, who, uh, he, he also directed um, Chadwick Boseman on interacting with audiences when performing live music, because of course Big Jagger knows a little something about that, that's, research the Rolling Stones, folks, the Rolling Stones, oh yes, in 2016, he starred as, this is Chadwick Boseman, he starred as Thoth. The a deity, is it Thoth or Thoth? I think it might be Thoth or Thoth. T-H-O-T-H, a deity from Egyptian mythology and gods of Egypt. I think it, it might be Thoth, like Moth. I think it's Thoth. All right. Um, Boseman was one of a few actors of color, a few, a Boseman was one of the few actors of color featured in the film which had drawn criticism for using a predominantly white cast to portray Egyptian characters. Mm. Agreeing with the criticism, Bozeman said this had motivated him to accept the role to ensure one of the film's African characters will be played by someone of African descent. Hmm. Imagine that. This dude stands up for what he believes in. In 2016, Bozeman began portraying the Marvel Comics hat. <laughs> Here we go. I'm getting excited now. Come on, somebody. Where? There we go. Ah. You see him. You see him. There we go. You're right there. In 2016, Bozeman began portraying the Marvel Comics character T'Challa slash Black Panther in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Captain, Amer Captain America Civil War was his first film in a five picture deal with Marvel Entertainment. A five movie deal. Yes. I need that. I want that. I'm gonna get that. Oh yes. Facts. He did not audition for the role. Instead, having a discussion about what Marvel wanted to do and how he saw it and what he wanted to do. That's, that's, that's dope. That's so dope. While working on Civil War, the Avengers Civil War, let's see. 
on last month. Here we go. While working on Civil War, Bozeman learned some Kosa from John Kanai, who played his father, um, T'Chaka, and also insisted on using the language for the character. Bozeman also developed a Wakandan accent himself and used it during the entire production, whether he was on camera or not. And that reminds me of like people talking about Eddie Murphy when they were talking about um, coming to America and how Eddie Murphy would be dressed up in uh, his barbershop outfit or whatever character he was playing. He would just walk around the set with the, with the uh, in character and nobody knew it was him at first. But he would just do that. You know what I'm saying? Just, 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 just stay locked in, so that on film it was just natural. By the time they did cuts and shoots and all that stuff, like it was just natural. So, I dig it. I dig it. That's what's up. Let's see. In 2018, Bozeman returned. Here we go. In 2018, Bozeman returned as the Black Panther in the Black Panther movie. So much hype about that movie, and it exceeded it. Like, man, even right now, I can turn it on and just, and just watch it. Because I just, I don't know how many times I've seen it, but, like, it's just one of those movies for me. You know what I mean? Never get tired of it. It's just like that. Especially with songs like this. Oh, yes. Check out the soundtrack, y'all. The film opened to great anticipation, becoming one of the highest grossing films. The role earned Bozeman a spot on the 2018 Time 100 as one of the world's most influential people with Sean Diddy Combs writing his entry. Ladies and gentlemen, I remember at the premieres, like just seeing it on social media everywhere, on the news and all that, folks were coming out like dressed like this right here. Like this is just the minimum, I think, for what I saw. It was just... Whether it was headdresses, like the, you know, just makeup or paint or whatever. Just people just were just decked out. Like, it's just beautiful, man. Full on character. It was like, not necessarily, it was, I guess there was some cosplay involved, but it didn't have to be. You know, just traditional garb, like from whatever country, you know, you know, people were from, you know. Um, and then people really started getting into like ancestor, with, you know, ancestral, like research and all that. And, Man, like looking up, you know, checking out their DNA and all that stuff. I mean, it's just, it's amazing the effect that that uh, that movie had on the Black Panther movie had on like our society in a social sense, in a self-discovery you know, sense, in terms of where do I come from? Where does my family come from? Like, I want to know what my culture is, you know, like my roots, my ancestors, um, the true black facts, for real. I want to know about myself. This movie really, there were people already doing it. Um, I remember back in the 90s, there was a time period where people started to do that again. But this was just like the next step. Because we had, uh, for the first time, we're seeing, um, in this way, we're seeing a black, an African um, superhero that everybody seemed to love. It wasn't just us, it was everybody seemed to love. It just broke down all kind of like, you know, stereotypes in terms of what a superhero, especially on film, looked like. Um, the, stere the, the stereotypes of what superheroes look like to kids. Um, I would say uh, Black Panther is definitely still the number one superhero that, that my students love. And that was 2018 when this film dropped. So, I mean, I think that's embedded forever with these kids. Black Panther, oh yes. Cause they got pictures now, they got film. Some were probably given Black Panther, whatever, you know, bed sheets and all that stuff as a baby, toys, you know, plush, you know, stuff. And they're probably gonna keep them for forever. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just one of those things. You know, me growing up with Star Wars and, and all that, like, same kind of thing, it's forever. So I, I appreciate the seed being planted and Mr. Bozeman being the person who, um, who represents that, who's the icon for that. 
I appreciate that. Stay focused. Um, the Black Panther is seen as a landmark in being the first mega budget movie to have a predominantly black cast and director. Shout out to Ryan Coogler. Oh, yes. Um, look forward to meeting you one day, sir. Oh, yes. And looking with you. It's nice, though. Um, so it was the first mega budget movie to have a predominantly black cast and director as well as the first superhero film to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture. Should have won. Not just nominated. It should have won. Everybody watching that show. Everybody just like being aware that that movie exists. Like... That might have been a definitely top five snub of all time. Definitely. That like whoever won, you know, the, you know the best best uh, picture. That that must have been on like the the the, um, the electoral college version of the vote for the Academy Award. The elect the electoral college because the popular vote the popular vote was Black Panther straight up. Straight up. Come on. That movie is a, is, a, is a staple, is a standard. Like, straight up. Come on. Anyway, calm down. Chadwick reprised the role in both Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame which were released in 2018 and 2019 respectively. So he, that means that he played uh, Black Panther, T'Challa, um, in the Avengers Infinity War and the Avengers Endgame. All right. Both films were the highest grossing of the year. They were released with Endgame going on to become the highest grossing film of all time. Thanks. I think that still stands. I'm not sure. You can do the research on that. In 2017, Chadwick Boseman portrayed Thurgood Marshall in the biographical film Marshall. Oh, yes. It was premiered at Howard University, which both Boseman and Thurgood Marshall attended. Mm-hmm. That's so dope, man. That's, that's, that's what's up. Shout out to Stevie and Mel and the whole Marshall family. Love y'all, man. Facts. Mr. Marshall. I mean, I'm still game for softball if you are, sir. Let's go. Oh, yes. Yeah, I can still crank that joke. You already know. Oh, yes. All right. In 2019, he starred in 21 Bridges. I like this movie, too. An American action thriller film directed by Brian Kirk. He was approached to work on the film by two of its producers, Avengers directors, the Russo brothers, while at the Infinity War premiere. So they were doing the Infinity War premiere and the Russo brothers who co-directed the Avengers, they approached Chadwick Boseman about doing 21 Bridges. That's how this thing works, man. You know, when I tell my students, I'm like, show up, be ready. Good things are going to happen, but just basically the showing up is like 90%. You know what I mean? At least 80%. But I say 90% of the game. Show up, baby. Be confident. You know what I'm saying? Confidence is certainly key. Confidence is certainly the key. Confidence is key. Facts. But show up, baby. And, you know, just, and do your best. Do your best. And these guys love this work. They're like, man, we love it. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to make, make sure he gets in this one too. We doing this work. Who do we want? Chad. Let's get Chadwick Boseman. Oh, yes. All right. Now, while 21 Bridges was filming, the Russos and Bozeman were working on Endgame. Keep it in the family, baby. I think that's dope. I want to see. I, I, love, I, I just want to do that kind of thing with my friends. Oh, yes. Thanks. Um, Bozeman was also a producer on 21 Bridges. Of course. That's only fitting. Mm-hmm. All of the film's characters were originally conceived as male and white, with Bozeman encouraging amendments to this and other parts of the story. I really dig how he never 
wane from, he never ran from challenge that still exists with representation, proper representation in film. Like, I dig that. I appreciate that. It's still a struggle, but I mean, he got fired from all my children for standing up for what he believed in. You know what I'm saying? They fired the Black Panther. They didn't know it yet. They fired Jackie Robinson. They didn't know it yet. They fired James Brown. They, they fired Thurgood Marshall. They ain't know it yet. Should have sued him. Thurgood Marshall, take him to court. Nah, but seriously though, man, like, he stood up for what he believed in, man. No fear, man. No fear. Only facts! Oh, yes. In 2019, Bozeman was announced as part of the cast for the Netflix films The Five Bloods. The Five Bloods. Directed by the one and only, the GOAT, Sir Spike Lee. And Spike Lee came to the University of Maryland um, when I was there. So this was probably 2011, 2010, 2011. Um, sometime between 2009 and 2011. And he was speaking, he was just uh, speaking there in the Stamp Union, Union building. And he was brought there by my brothers. Oh yes, A Phi A. And a uh, shout out to my brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Oh yes. Um, specifically in this time, the Maryland chapter. Thank y'all, man. Love y'all, appreciate you, man, for real. Thank you for welcoming me into the fold. I appreciate that, man, for real. Thank you so much. Um. Yeah, man, and he was just talking about his film, so I just wanted to, and I actually got a chance to ask him a question, so I had to shout out um, Spike Lee for, I asked him which one was his, which one of his films was his favorite, and he said, Spike Lee said, wow, um, I, that's, a, that's, that's a good question, that's a hard one, it's like, I can't really say, he said he couldn't really say because it's kind of like choosing which one of his children were his favorite. He sees his plays, his his, uh, his movies, his films, and like his children. And so he can't really have a favorite because he loves all of them, you know, for different reasons because they're all unique. So he's not going to favor one of them over the other. He loves all of them. And I do too. Facts. Thank you, sir. I love that lesson that you, that you taught me straight up. That was good. So I had to shout out Spike just now. Check out Spike Lee. That's capital S-P-I-K-E space. Capital L E E. All right, hit hit enter on that joint and research Spike Lee, Spike Lee and Denzel, Spike Lee and Chad Bozeman. All right, connections, man. It's like the network is strong. Facts. <clears throat> Here we go. So he did. Um, he was announced as part of the cast for the Netflix films. The Five Bloods, directed by Spike Lee, and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, directed by George C. Wolfe, all right? He took those bucket list roles for opportunities to work with Spike Lee and with Ma Rainey producer Denzel Washington, as well as the opportunity to perform in an August Wilson play, telling Entertainment Weekly that he wanted to make sure these non-superhero films, he wanted to make non-superhero films because... He said, if you don't do the films that you plan to do, I think you wouldn't feel fulfilled as an artist. So he was saying that he wanted to make sure he did the kind of work that he wanted to do, like the things that he had been wanting and longing to do, the things that he had actually been producing, like things of the serious nature, you know what I'm saying? Um, I spoke to what he was fighting for the whole time, you know what I mean? Um, Things that really link to his heritage and just just um, his roots. I mean, like I said, his core beliefs. Um, he all he just wanted to do projects that reflected that, um, and not get stuck or, or pinned as a, a superhero, somebody who, who was just good for superhero movies or uh, biopics, biopics, um, biographical films. He wanted to do projects like um, The Five Bloods and Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Um, because if he did not do that, he wouldn't feel uh, fulfilled as an artist, and then he probably would leave this earth with some kind of regret. Um, I think that's what he was speaking to. So, I'm glad he got a chance to do that. He called it bucket list items. Like, these two projects in particular, bucket list items. 
That's what's up. Time magazine included Bozeman on their list of the 10 best movie performances of 2020 for both The Five Bloods and Ma Rainey. For Ma, for Ma Rainey, Bozeman received a posthumous nominations in the Best Actor category at the Academy Awards, British Academy Film Awards, Golden Globe Awards, and Screen Actors Guild Awards, becoming the eighth person and seventh man to receive a posthumous Academy Award acting nomination. Again, Black Panther should have won the best film. Moving on. The Five Bloods was released on June 12, 2020. The film Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, in which Bozeman co-stars as a trumpeter, uh, Levy, was released after Chadwick passed away in 2020. Outside of performing, Chadwick Bozeman supported various charities. All right, this is important right here. He worked with cancer charities, including St. Jude's Hospital, continuing to support those battling the disease up until his own death from it. He donated $10,000 to the Boys and Girls Club of Harlem to provide free tickets for children who wanted to see Black Panther. In response, Disney donated $1 million to the Boys and Girls Clubs to advance its STEM programs. See that? That's the power of influence, man. Standing up for what he believed in. Doing what he wanted to do with his life. Following his dreams. I preach that every day, man. And I and I tell my students, like, as I'm saying it to my students, I'm actually telling it to myself. You know what I mean? Like, thinking before I speak, yeah, I'm saying it to myself. You know, so it's not just, I'm just, you know, trying to, like, cram information into their brains and, like, preaching out and, you know, and all that. No, I'm saying it to myself. All right? I'm saying it to myself, too. Before I even get to this, to my students, I'm saying it to myself, reminding myself of what's most important. <sighs> so goes, keep moving, almost there. Chadwick Bozeman advocated for children's charities. In April 2020, he donated $4.2 million in personal protective equipment to hospitals fighting the COVID-19 pandemic in black communities starting his own Operation 42 Challenge to encourage others to donate PPE. $4.2 million in personal protective equipment. Wow. I didn't know that before I did this research. That's good to know, man. That's, that's some straight up Black Panther stuff. Straight up. Bozeman was diagnosed with stage... Ooh. This is tough for me, man. Um... Shout out to everybody who's battling cancer, who's fought cancer and won, uh, who has a loved one who is fighting. Uh, those of us who are grieving, still mourning uh, the passing or the transition of, of um, our loved one. Um, yeah, from the fight with cancer. Um, shout out to my father, Blue. I love you, man, and that's why I decided to dedicate this to you. Um, it's no joke, man. Um, so, please, like, whatever we do, let's, like, like I say, make sure that we take care of ourselves, you know, get checked out. Um, you know, I got my colonoscopy uh, last year, end of last year, um, and... It's not pleasant, but it's necessary. Uh, I'll say this. The actual procedure, it's a breeze. I mean, it was knocked out. It's considered surgery. You know what I'm saying? I was knocked out. Didn't feel a thing. But the preparation for it? No. Oh, listen. If any adults are watching this and you have to do a colonoscopy, wipes. Use wipes. Toilet paper will definitely hurt after a while. So use wipes, man, maybe get some aloe vera wipes or whatever, but use the wipes, you know, the flushable ones, you know what I mean? Even if they're not flushable, use wipes, invest in wipes, yo, for real. 
Because the whole objective of the colonoscopy is to clean out. And that's exactly what it does. That, that prep is crazy. But it's necessary, folks. Take care of self and each other. All right? Because when my friends came asking me about the process, I could help. I can make that recommendation. If I don't say anything else, I'm going to say this. Use wipes. Okay? Toilet paper will hurt. After a while. Because there's a lot of that. You know, you got to do a lot of wiping. So, without getting too graphic, that's my about getting the colon, uh, getting colonoscopy. We were talking about cancer. He had colon cancer. All right, that's a big deal. Okay, shout out to all my friends who are mourning, grieving, um, who are still, you know, dealing with um, the loss of a loved one or the, the passing of a loved one. I don't like to say loss. Um, cause my father's still with me. I mean, this is his skin tone, his hands, you know, like. His features and everything. I get it from him. Straight up. My mom too, but definitely my dad. She even said it. So, never really gone. Always with me. My man Blue. You're my boy Blue! Facts. Love you, man. Alright. So, he was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer in 2006, which eventually progressed to stage 4 before 2020. So, it went to stage 4 before 2020 hit. He never spoke publicly about this uh, diagnosis, and according to the Hollywood Reporter, only a handful of non-family members knew that Bozeman, that uh, Chadwick Bozeman was sick, with varying degrees of knowledge about the severity of his condition. During treatment involving multiple surgeries and chemotherapy, he continued to work and completed production for several films, including Marshall. The Five Bloods, Ma Rainey, and others. Yo. Like I said, whole new appreciation, man. This brother was going through, he was going through surgery and chemo. Let alone the psychological, metaphysical, like. Because I've seen it. Like, I was with my dad every day when he was going through. Like, when my dad was fighting, I was there every day. And so, and my dad had pancreatic cancer. Colon cancer, this dude went through surgeries, multiple surgeries and chemotherapy and was still grinding. And we get the benefit from it because we still have the fail. We have the fails. We have the work. The inspiration is still here. It's never really gone, man. Get into it, man. He continued to work, man. Chadwick Boseman began dating, so that, that was it. Now let's get into the personal life just a little bit. Chadwick Boseman began dating singer Taylor Simone Ledward in 2015. The two reportedly got engaged by October 2019, and they later married in secret, as revealed by Boseman's family in a statement announcing his death. Like, I never knew he was married. A lot of people, almost everybody I know was like, I know that. Wow, she's beautiful. That was the two comments. She's fine. Like, yeah, she's beautiful. Go ahead, Chadwick. Go ahead, Black Panther. Um, Bozeman was raised a Christian and was baptized. He was part of a church choir and youth group, and his former pastor said that he still kept his faith. He studied Hebrew and had a good knowledge of the both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Bozeman had stated that he prayed to be the Black Panther before he was cast as the character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. His alma mater, Howard University, renamed its College of Fine Arts in honor of Bozeman on May 26, 2021. Folks, this is Chadwick Bozeman doing the uh, Howard University 2018 commencement speech. He did the commencement address it was a major event. That right there says WHUT. That's the local uh, new, uh, the local station in uh, one of the local stations in Washington D.C. Uh, WHUT. But it was all over the place, man. The Black Panther came back home to celebrate graduation with his fellow Bison. Like, 
That was special, man. Like, there were people who didn't even go to Howard who were trying to get tickets to go to that. It was like going to a concert or something. Going to see Barack speak. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like that. So do the research, man. Go ahead and hit him up on YouTube. Like, just see all the different, you know, videos that are there. Check out the Black Panther, the 21 Bridges and all that. If you're too young, parental advisory is recommended. I just recommend parental advisory for a lot of the films. Um, but... You know, if there's nothing else, man, you still got the Black Panther, man. You still got Black Panther and Avengers and all that. Um, shout out to Marvel. Um, seriously, man. Y'all, do your research on Chadwick Boseman. Just get into it, man. See this. Just be inspired by his story, his fight, his grind, his dream, his love, his passion, his sincerity, his steadfastness, his boldness. Um, he had no fear, man. It just seemed like he had no fear. And and that's 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 valuable, man. That's that's um that's key, man. No fear, just being brave, man. Using his God-given talent to change the world for the better. And that's what Black Facts is all about. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up one more time for Mr. Chadwick Boseman. This has been the 26th episode of Black Facts. Black Facts. My name is Mike Fields, also known as Facts. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your weekend or, or rest of your Saturday. Because me, I'm about to go ahead and get back into my jams. Uh.